I slept in here the other night. It was adorable. This is so cute. It really was fun. It was really cute to sleep in here. Uh, everything you need, every feature that's in the big vans is going to be in these mini me's and it is so cool. It really is. I tried sleeping with my head down at this end. And I also tried sleeping with my head down at this end. And depending on how you park and the angle of the van, this is truly an ambidextrous sleeping arrangement. You can sleep either way, doesn't matter. If you're down at this end, you can reach over and put your water on the counter. If you're down at that end, you'll have your refrigerator chest over there as a nightstand. Uh, I learned a few things and I confirmed a few things. So one of the things that I did learn is I have a wall panel going here and I have a cutout with an inset box storage compartment. It's kind of like a, a box that fits through a hole in the panel. So we take up all this depth. Great, you got storage space. And when you're sleeping down at this end, it's nice to have that. But when you decide to sleep down at this end, it's not so good. Because when you're laying here, it's right there. It's right here, it's imposing. And it made me realize something. You know, when you're building vans, the big focus is on storage. We need storage, we need more storage. We gotta bring our stuff, storage. Oh, we gotta think about quality of life as well. This is a small space. This is a micro camper, the mini me. And my intention here is to keep it as wide open as possible so that you don't feel closed in. You don't feel like everything is imposing on you. It's no windows in these vans, and that's by design. Uh, my feeling is when you have this type of a, a van that's so small, these micro campers, I think there's a, a stronger sense of security when you don't have windows back here, no glass. You don't feel like somebody could look in on you, even if you had them blocked. When you've got a solid body shell like this, I think you feel a little more secure. You might call this the class A of micro campers. Or maybe not. One thing that was confirmed to me is that the um, sling system that we built into the plywood base of the bed, it works. I've only got a three inch foam, memory foam mattress down here. Now, that wasn't so great. I need to have a denser, thicker, more comfortable mattress. But I could definitely feel that that sling system that we cut into the plywood was working. I could feel myself being cradled in it like a hammock. Not too soft, but I did feel it working. So I'm gonna have to go to uh, my good friends in San Francisco, the futon shop, and they're gonna custom make the bedding, the, the mattress for these vans. I want four inches and I want it dense. I want it really dense and thick and all natural. You know sinks are a big bone of contention with me. I like a nice big deep sink in my RV and I want one in my mini me as well. Uh, I like to cook, I like to clean up, I don't like any splash, I like to work in a nice big deep sink. I like to put a crock pot in the sink and cook a meal while I'm driving. I know that uh, the majority of people interested in these mini-me's are women of the female persuasion and they're going to want to wash their hair in a nice big deep sink. So I've made that provision. This is our faucet I've settled on. It's got a nice trajectory down into the bowl and the color combination with the faucet and the sink, very bold, very bold. We're not afraid. The next step in this design process is my induction cooktop. See this? Uh, there's a couple of decisions to be made. One, I can mount this induction cooktop flush with the countertop and let it set there. The other option is I can set it down a slight distance and have a countertop cover similar to a cutting board cover. So now you've got full countertop and when you want to cook, you just take the cover off and there's your induction cooktop. You can cook on it. It would be slightly recessed as opposed to being flush with the countertop. The other option is to remove it all together and have a full countertop here and when you need it, you bring it out of its storage space 
and you put it on top of the counter to cook. That will raise it up quite a distance, almost three inches up off the countertop. So whatever pots you may have on here, uh, there's not a lot of room for cooking in here. So that's a consideration. I'm leaning towards, I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm leaning towards insetting this in the countertop flush and leave it there. And then my second choice would be to just lower it down slightly into its own cavity where I can put a countertop cover over it when it's not in use. And you'd, that's, a, that's a simple move as well. But I kind of think that I'd like it just inset flush in the counter. You can always take it outside. It's a portable induction cooktop with rubber feet and I'm gonna leave it in such a way that you can take it outside. So choice number one, flush in the countertop. Choice number two, recess slightly with a cutting board cover on the countertop. And uh, three is to store it somewhere else, bring it out, set it on the hard countertop and cook a little bit higher. Those are the choices. You tell me what you think. This is the physical plant or the utility room for the Mini Me. This area is fully accessible when you slide out the drawer box. There's going to be a drawer box that fits in here and it obviously has a drawer and it will also house the induction cooktop in the upper portion. So you'll have a decently deep drawer, maybe eight inches deep, and it'll go all the way back to here and it's full width. That whole box can slide out and then you have full access to all of your mechanicals. This is our electric hot water heater. Uh, this is a Stiebel Eltron electric water heater. It's an on-demand water heater. As long as you have fresh water, you can make hot water. It's a 120 volt unit and it pulls 2,400 watts at 20 amps. Now, if you are using your induction cooktop, you cannot use the water heater. You cannot run both of those items off the 3,000 watt inverter. So, to help you remember that, I'm gonna give you a switch on the wall, and that is gonna be a single pole, double throw switch. Meaning, when it's in one position, the water heater works, and the cooker outlet doesn't. When it's in the other position, the cooker outlet works and the water heater doesn't. You can't screw it up. The outlet for the induction cooktop is on the outside of Central Command, and that way you can use that plug for anything else you wanna plug in. If it's live, the heater is not. If you want the hot water, you've gotta turn off the outlet. It's that simple, but that's gonna save your um, it's going to save your inverter from any uh, overtaxation. It'll just shut down if you pushed it too far, but we don't want to do that anyway. So this is the uh, fresh water tank. There's a inspection hatch here and it's fully accessible. You know, like I say, when you pull that box out, this is what you're going to see. You have access to everything. Uh, the pickup tube from the water pump is right here. That's going to have a check valve down the bottom of the tank. It's gonna pull that water up through the pump into a manifold. That'll go to your hot water and it'll go to your sink. This is your water fill. You're filling your water tank from inside the van. I'll show you that. It's on the other side of central command. This is the vent for the water tank. That's gotta be hooked up. You do not ever wanna fill this tank so far that the water comes spitting out of the vent because one of the things I've explained in some of my other videos, and I'll explain here again, is when you've got an inspection hatch in the top of your tank like this, it's not designed to be a waterproof inspection hatch. It's water resistant, and for the most part, it's gonna keep the water down in the tank. But if you fill this tank up so far, it's gonna leak out of this lid, okay? So you don't wanna do that. This is Central Command. This is where all the action takes place in the Mini-Me. This is the outlet. There's gonna be a black GFCI outlet right here. It's the outlet I was talking about when we were in the utility room. You can plug your cooktop in here. You can plug anything in here and use it outside or in the van. This is your main outlet, 120 volt outlet for the van. 
And then you come up here, this is water. Right here is water. This is the water, the fresh water fill. It's inside the van. You have to open the slider. This is one of those Acuva Acor, Acor. So you put this guy in. First of all, you'd have this connected to your hose, your water hose and an inline sediment filter. I cannot stress enough that you use an inline sediment filter with your hose. Now you got this over there, it's charged up. You come over, the water's ready, it's in the hose. All you have to do is click that in. It opens the valve, then you turn on this valve and you fill your tank. This is the sight tube to watch the tank filling up. This is a momentary contact switch. When you hold it in, a light comes on and you can see the water filling up the tank. And I'll have little tick marks here for half and full. Under no means do you overfill the tank and have that water spitting out this vent. And you just take this out. Oh, sorry, turn the valve off first. Good God. And then take it out. You shouldn't have more than a drip or two. So you'll have a rag with you. So that's your water. This is your outlet. This is your sight tube. This is a dual USB port. So you've got two 3.0 USB ports. You should be able to charge your items very quickly with that much power. These two gauges, don't let them scare you. This one is the Lithionix battery gauge. So everything that you wanna know about your battery, state of charge, how much you're using, how much solar's coming into it, how much is going out while it's coming in, all right here on this gauge. Very smart, very easy to navigate. This keypad is for the Xantrex inverter, 3000 watt inverter. There is a lot of overlap as to what these gauges can do and what they display. My suggestion is if it's battery related, use this gauge, reference this gauge. If it's inverter related, you reference this gauge. This and this and the solar controllers and the DC to DC charging all have Bluetooth apps on your phone. If you choose, you never have to look at these gauges, just use the apps on your phone. This is your switch pad. This controls all the lights and the water pump. Everything that's controlled in this van is done right here. If you're in bed with your head here or your head down the other end or you're cooking, you can get up and reach these. If you notice the contour and design of this faceplate, you cannot brush past and inadvertently turn a switch on or off. Just can't happen. That's very deliberate in a van this small because you're moving around, you don't want to hit a switch by mistake or even break the toggle right off. Can't happen with that switch. Bed. This is beautiful, I love it. So each one of these will be labeled. You've got uh, galley lights one, bedroom lights two. You've got your water pump. You've got a night light. You've got, uh, what else? I don't know. Oh, the UV, the UV water. You'll see, I'll show you. Central command. Gray water tank. Six gallon gray water tank paired up with the 14 gallons of fresh water. The only thing entering this gray water tank is your sink water. This is the trap right here. It's a duck build trap. And uh, this is uh, sink water. So that's brushing your teeth, cooking, washing your hair. Uh, this hole right here is gonna have a port like this. I'm waiting for it to come in. This will be an overflow port that goes directly down through the van floor out onto the ground. If you did happen to overfill this gray, it can never backflow into the trap because this is the first hole it's gonna meet and it will just exit, trickle out onto the road. This port here is part of a system with this is a uh, 12 volt solenoid. This is an electric switch, that's electric valve. That's all that is basically. So that's gonna go right here. It's gonna tee into this overflow and it's gonna connect right here. If you're in an appropriate area or you're at a dump station, you just hit a switch and this opens the valve and it empties your tank for you. This space right here in front of the uh, duckbill trap is reserved for the UV filter canister. There is a sediment filter that goes in line with the UV 
uh, purified water. So that's where that canister will sit. And then the UV light box will sit right in this space here with an access hatch. So you can get at it, you can change the filter. So that's also fully accessible. And the way we've designed this galley, the entire galley can be built out on the table, complete, and just slide it right in the van and bolt it in. We've already got our mounting points located. This galley is actually locked in place. It's not moving. And then here's the bottom of the gray tank. And there's your solenoid. So this little solenoid area will be boxed in so you can store things on top of it. This is a great little spot here to store camping chairs or maybe the, um, the awning that comes with the van. 